Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering the switch case statement. Um, I think this is going to be the last control structure I focus on. The do while is very similar to the while loop. Um, maybe I'll show that video as well. But um, you should never really use the go to function, which just basically you go to a specific line. The return function will cover when we do functions. And um, Oh, well, I'll be introducing break the break statement here as well. Anyway, so today we're fo focusing on the switch case statement. So the way you set this up is always we're just going to set up our pin. We're using pin 10 still, and that's still going to be an output. So use the switch case. So let's set it up first, and then I'll explain it. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have num. In fact, we're going to do another, make another variable. This variable is going to be called num, and that's going to be equal to zero for now. And the way switch statement works is like this. So we're going to have num, and that's all we do. And then we have our cases, and what these refer to, here we're using colon, not semicolon. And essentially what happens with this is, whatever this number here is, responds to this number here. So if this number was one, then it's going to execute this statement that we're about to write. So in this case, what we want to happen is we're going to say um, digital write high. That needs to be all, nope. First we need to put in our pin. Then we need to say that we want that to be high. Don't forget the semicolon. And that's it. Then we can do a and usually it's custom to just put break here at the end. And what break, all that break does is it breaks out of the loop. Um, I can show that in a while loop. It'll probably be easier. So because you won't necessarily notice it with a case statement. Anyway, so case two, colon, hit tab, digital write. And we're going to say pin is low. So use the case statement essentially when you have a set number of cases. I mean, as you can tell, for, I mean, it's not very efficient to write out hundreds of these, but if you've only got a few, you've got maybybe case one, case two, case three, case four, or even that kind of number, then it's just easy to do a case statement. And so that's done. And as I said before, whatever this number here corresponds to, is which part we'll execute. So here we're gonna put number equals one when we execute. So when we run this, the switch statement is gonna say, look, okay, we're, we're looking at this uh, variable here, which is one and num is equal to one. So we put here and then we're gonna set the digital pin to high. And that's all you do. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. But that's fine. We just want to do upload. And there you go. You can see on the camera that the LED is now on. And if we, whoops, if we change this now to two, which is case two, then um, in fact, we, let's make a third case as well. Let's do case three, and we'll just do do it like this. Tab. I'm just going to copy this line here. Control copy. Control V. Then we're going to have a delay of one second. Whoops, that's caps. And then we're going to have this statement. Whoops, how did I do that? Control copy, control V, control copy. Okay, so that's case three now, and we're going to break out of this as well. <laughs> so let's just quickly do case two which is what our number equals. Okay, I've forgotten something. I needed that there. 
Let's verify and compile this. Let's upload it. Now the LED should be off as it is. And now well, let's go to case three. And now we should have a flashing LED. And there you go, it's flashing on and off. Hopefully you can see that. So that's it for the case statement. Um, yeah, so th this statement is useful when you've got a small number of things you need to do really. And it does look quite neat as well. I like how it looks. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. If you didn't, then maybe leave a dislike. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.